Oh, yeah, it's a great play. It's, a great, it's fantastic. It's a great play. It's you know great. who else I didn't have any reasons for? Was who? Cam Smith last week. And I believe there's a video out there of you dogging me for Cam hey, Smith. I and he won the damn tournament. What's going on, golf addicts? The Toy Junkies Podcast for the Valve Bar Championship 2022 from the Innis Prison Source Copperhead Course. Poisonous snake pit coming at you. New background, Pat Perry coming at you, getting toutier and toutier, just dripping that tout all over the place here. That's right. I'm pumped. Mm-hmm. We're gonna get right hit right into the top of the betting board for the Valspar Championship. The shorter range, Pat, up to 25 to 1. Talk through the betting approach. Talk through some of these guys, you know, coming over from a long week. Long week at the players' championship where Cam Smith what a week. took it down. And um, I got some names. That, I got a name up here I, I hate. Actually, I may ran on him now. I may ran on him uh, on the DraftKings show. But we're going to have a good one tonight, Pat, before we get into that top of the board. Uh, I'm, I got the tequila tonight, a little tequila soda and orange, one of my the favorites. tequila. You know, the weather starts warming up. This is a great beverage. That is. What do you got? You got uh, a beer? This little beer tonight, a little classic city lager. Mm. Good stuff. Not very From, high. It's not very high test. DB. Well, it's lager. It's lager. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, we had a great week last week. The Players Championship was fun. It was carnage. I got to meet C. Wu last week. Hopefully, everybody that saw good. that. Uh, secured the. That Wu. feels like ages ago. It, it really, really does. does. It does. <laughs> we did the show live in person on your couch last week. That was great. Mm-hmm. What a great show that was. We may be doing that again very shortly to be to be to be announced later. Um, but I'm excited, man. We got a good show tonight. Top of the betting board for the Valspar, Pat, up to 25 to 1. You know, you got some of these guys returning from, like I said, from TPC. JT, Hovland, Xander had him a weekend. He, he had nothing to do. So did Morikawa. Uh, Louis Ustazen, who kind of fizzled on Sunday, had a chance. Could have could have hit for us on the card. He was the one name we both had. He, he bombed. Sam Burns, who had a chance and also kind of bombed. Dustin Johnson, who shot a 63 on Sunday to tie the course record, and nobody knew it. I don't even know the broadcasting team knew it. I think I saw one shot. I don't know what was going on with that. Jason Kokrak, Terrell Hatton, and Matthew Fitzpatrick. So Fitzpatrick, uh, Morikawa, Xander, those three, I think, are the ones that really fell fell victim to the near three-and-a-half shot wave difference at TPC Sawgrass. Uh, and all all had their weekends free up, which, you know, could be looked at as a good thing coming into the very difficult Innisbrook course, uh, the Copperhead course at Innisbrook. Now, I did release uh, the course breakdown video earlier today and podcasts, wherever you listen to podcasts, it's already up. I spent about 15 minutes giving you the stats, the trends, the, uh, you know, the player quotes that I find important when it comes to researching and understanding what does well at Copperhead and what this course is all about. So you're going to want to go listen to that. Uh, Pat and I are all studied up, and we're not gonna we're not gonna you know bore you with with the details on the golf course, Pat. But what are you doing up here at the top of the board, if anything? And tell me one name you're gonna avoid. Yeah. Last week, um, yeah. I really thought that he was going to come in on Sunday and content, or Monday, I guess you could say, and content, con- contend for a win, but he did not. But still, I mean, I like UC a lot here. He's got great history. As a matter of fact, the history here is weird. It's it's kind of like last week. You know, everybody's all over the place. You don't get a lot of good, consistent history on this course from 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 certain guys. But yeah. he does have really good, consistent history. That he's played here four times in the last five years. Three of those were top tens, including the second place finish in 2019. Remember, they did not play here in 2020 because of COVID. And another big difference is, I will say this: last year was in May, yep. right? Was in May, yeah. Yep. And so it was a little bit different as far as the grass surface at that time. They didn't have as much overseed. It was kind of getting, uh, 
you know, it was it was it was more de- their natural Bermuda sure, surface. Bermuda, yeah. Whereas this year, there's a little more overseed that's in there, or a lot more overseed that's like basically tea to green. Um, but I do like Usti a lot this week. I think at, at twenty four to one, that's a good number. And then why not? Why can we not go back to Sam Burns? It it you know he's twenty two to one in some places I've seen. You know the the deal with Burns, you know, before really Arnold Palmer, is he just didn't have the hot putter. He had three straight weeks, I believe, where he lost strokes putting, which is kind of unusual for Sam Burns because he's a great putter, especially when he gets on Bermuda, uh, and maybe that's why is because he wasn't on much Bermuda before that. But you know, the last couple weeks his putter's gotten hot, so I'm okay with getting on Sam Burns, and we've seen back to back winners here before. We saw it with Paul Casey just a few years ago. So I, I like the number there. If you can get Sam Burns closer to like 20 to 1, 22 to 1, I think it's a pretty good number. As always, the Tour Junkies betting show brought to you by our friends at Covers.com. Winning starts at Covers.com. They've got everything you need. Now the baseball's back up and running. If you like to bet on the old, uh, you know, old America's pastime, you can do that. NBA mm-hmm. stuff, NHL stuff. Uh, they've just got everything you need over there. All the tools, uh, free resources. They've got a forum in there with over 500,000 members. It's free. You can get in there and mix it up with some folks. They help over 20 million sports bettors annually, and they've been doing that for over 25 years. Covers.com is where you go to start your betting process. And we're they're proud proud supporters, and, and we're proud supporters of Covers as well. Um, so appreciate Covers.com for supporting the podcast. In fact, our, our article has already dropped you know, no, everything's all thrown off because the players had to go and be weird. So our article is already up for this week. I've got uh, three top, no, three head-to-head matchups in there. And I mixed it up in the article. I gave you a top 40 lock that I'm going to talk about later tonight. And I gave you two nationality prop bets that I love, which oh, normally wow. I don't. Nice work. And I'm probably not going to talk about them on the show because people got to go read the article, but it's it's good stuff, covers.com. Um, you know, Pat, so who's the who's your guy you're staying away from? Because I want to talk about a couple of your plays here, but who's the guy you're staying away from in this range? Well, I think if I'm looking at this range as far as a stay away, I, well, there's several that I'm staying away from, but probably the biggest one is, is – um, crap. You figuring this out on the fly? I'm on the fly here. You didn't I see didn't, it says stay away write, like what we've had. I didn't, I didn't write that down. We've had that I'd say every, Xander. Every week. I'd say Xander. Staying away from Xander. I mean, just, I just uh, don't see it. You liked was, Xander last week, and then now you're you're off of him because he missed the cut on the wrong side of the draw. At yeah, the I'm still going to be off of him. Yeah. yeah, you just you just you just threw something out there right then. I really did. did. I really did. I just threw <laughs> that out there. <laughs> okay. Uh, Why are you saying that? Because you don't like Do you like him? No, do I you like Xander. Well, I don't have him written down anywhere, but I just I remember last week. I don't remember a lot from last week's show. But I do remember <laughs> you liked Xander, and you were like, and you, no, you I put also it on the card. I you put also on the had card. no reasons then, and you have no reasons now. It's just, oh yeah, it's a great play. It's, a great, it's fantastic. It's a great play. It's, you know who else I didn't have any reasons for was who? Cam Smith last week, and I believe there's a video out there of you dogging me for Cam hey, Smith. I and he won the damn tournament. I posted the video, and I stand by it. Exactly what I said was going to happen happened. He sprayed the ball all over the yard, which uh, I cannot even fathom someone doing at a Pete Dye TPC well. Sawgrass. I can't even fathom it. I've been to that tournament like a handful of times now. I've played the golf course. I can't even believe that someone can go and lose almost six shots off the tee and win. But when you when you gain golf, when you, when you gain it's eleven golf. eleven putting. Then it can happen. Great for Cam Smith. I love Cam Smith. I'm a big fan of Cam Smith. Really do love the guy. Yeah. Mad I that I could, I wasn't on him. But I, I, I think my take last week was right. I think 99 out of 100 times that hits. There's no way he does what he did last week. Anyway, that's the TPC recap. Um, by the way, we do have uh, DP World Tour and Corn Ferry Tour podcasts hopping off, popping off, and hopping off. This week, uh, wherever you listen to podcasts, subscribe to those, download those. It'll be here on the YouTube page as well. I talked to Garrett Simmons, uh, which his I affectionately call him Little Daddy because he he started off, you know, these little young these young guys, they think they're all something, right? He started off all hot. He comes out mm-hmm. his first show, hits an 80-to-1 winner, and he starts saying, call me daddy, right? 
And so then I hit Hudson Swafford 251, Luke List at 75 to 1, and then he starts calling me Big Daddy. So he's Little Daddy. He's he said he's got some good nuggets for us this week. He says this golf. What am I? I mean, I had a few in there in between. Like my big try, uncle. You don't ever talk to Gary. Am you I like big talk. uncle or something? No, no. You just you're you're the you're the you're the real dad that's not even present anymore. You're you've left. You're gone. Because you but you put the conversations on a separate group. You don't put it in the group. This is what you do. This is what he you calls do. me. He calls DB. Me. This is what you do. You you. I I want to see like. One day I'm going to pull it. I'm going to grab your when phone. When I die, phone. you can have my phone, and I'll show you. And all I'm going to see you all phone. all the private texts that you yeah. send others. Yeah. Pri- I want you shit to. talking about me. Oh, yeah. Well, that's all I do is talk about you. I can't <laughs> stop talking about you. Uh, anyway, Garrett said he knows this course really well. He caddied at this, at this course, and he says it's interesting. But he, he's got some heaters for us. He's got some bombs he's going to deliver. And then uh, Mark Hill, DP World Tour is coming as well. So check that out. Uh, all right, top of the board for me. I agree with the Louis call. I think the 24 to 1 value on FanDuel right now, if you can still get it, I think it's still there. I'm not sure. But yeah, 16 to 1 on DK, 24 to 1 on FanDuel. I mean, like all the reasons Pat said, great record here. He's playing great. I disregard the Sunday kind of, he didn't even get into the picture or the conversation on Sunday. Um, but that's a good, that's a good number for Louis, I think. I like. I'm gonna. You're gonna hear a lot about Matthew Fitzpatrick from me this this week. I'm mm-hmm. back. I'm on Fitzy no, at 25 to one. At all. No. Yeah. Uh, caught the obviously caught the bad side of the draw. Missed the cut by two shots. You know, after losing three and a half on a, You know, th- that side lost three and a half because of weather. Whatever. The guy's playing amazing. Before that, everybody was on him. Um, he was chalking DFS, which you know, if you faded him, that was the right move. But it made all the sense in the world to bet on Matthew Fitzpatrick. And I think it still makes all the, all the sense in the world to bet on him. I don't know why you would stop now. This course suits him just as well as it has the last few Florida courses that everyone's been talking about how it suits him. He, he's only played here one time. He missed the cut. No big deal. I don't care. It was in 2018. He's a different player now for sure. And so I think Fitzpatrick at 25 to one is worth a shot. I think he wants to secure that first PJ tour victory. Now here's where I think it could get interesting. My fade is Sam Burns, Pat, my stay away that I wrote down is Sam Burns because, and I think I wrote this up in the covers column with a head-to-head matchup on him. I, I, I think you could visibly see him fighting the golf swing on Sunday. Like with the, with the coverage that he got, his swing was not, was not bueno. And he also talked about in a press conference, because I, you know, if you're in the nut hut, you know that I read all the press scripts and, you know, if I find something interesting, I'll clip it, screenshot it, and put it in the uh, all the transcripts from the press uh, press conferences. And put it in the nut hut. And my boy AC hooked us up and did that last week because I was at the players. But I think he talked about how the three missed cuts, you know, before the before the Honda or Bay Hill or whatever it was, three missed cuts. How he'd really been fighting something on the swing, and he felt like they got it figured out, which was great. And then he had a good showing, and then he came to the players. And on the right side of the draw, he he was in contention. He was there, and then he kind of looked like he really fought it on Sunday. I'm not saying that means he's going to miss the cut. I'm not saying that means he can't top 25. I'm not saying that means he can't even win. Like, he's obviously Sam Burns. He can win. Yes, he can. I just think if I've got to pick a name up here, the guy that I think was clearly fighting it on Sunday, he's now coming to defend his first t- a PJ Tour victory of his career. This is where he won first, and he's coming around to, to, to make it happen, all the responsibilities that go with that. After a dreadfully long week at TPC, one could, could suppose – that young Sam, had he not been this week's defending champion, may have already said sayonara and withdrawn like a few others. Um, I just don't think that's the play at 18-1 to 1 for Sam Burns. I, I'm not, again, not saying he's, he can't have a great week. I just say if I got to pick one, it's Sam Burns. He's out for me. Care to rebuttal or are you good? I mean, you know, I mean, you make some good points, but I, I still, I don't, I don't know. I don't. Hey, I don't Sam, will you clip I, that? Will you clip that? I don't know if I s- clip that saw the same things you did that he was fighting a whole lot but whatever I mean, okay. it's not like he, i mean he's playing in the best field in golf still finished t26 yeah maybe he had a bad final round so did, did. louis so did the guy you just said you liked usti <laughs> so, yeah I mean, yeah yeah i know i get it um all right let's let's keep it moving you want to sam why do you put in the chat you like <laughs> if i said clip that you'd probably be like ah fuck you <laughs> There's the explicit label on this week's podcast. Um, <laughs> Damn, I know you wouldn't. I'm just messing with you. 
All right. I'm let's... kind of in a feisty mood. If anybody, oh, uh, yeah, I started off in in kind of grumpy because I had to switch my computer. Sweet. Oh, anyway, yeah, let's go. Um, let's keep it moving. Mid range up to seventy five to one. This will be a hot category, I believe. Um, you got guys like Shane Lowry, who was pretty popular last week, ended up playing great. Keegan Bradley. Oh, God, Keegan. I'm actually so glad he did not win because, I mean, of all the times I've bet Keegan Bradley, if had he won last week, not been on my card, I really would have been pissed. Um, Tommy Fleetwood, who continues to just let down people. Um, Alex Norton had a good week. Adam Hadwin had a great Sunday. Our boy Cbez is back. You know, see Bez. Mm -hmm. uh, who else? Russell Knox had a great Sunday. He's up here at 70 to 1. Kisner had a great weekend, 70 to 1. HV3 had a good weekend, 70 to 1. Webb Simpson going to come back. I don't know if, what he's doing. So, anyway, that's the mid range. Um, I'll, I'll start with a few here. I mean, I definitely like Alex Norin. I, I like this, this trio here. Well, actually, HV3 can get a little better somewhere else. I like the trio of uh, Norin, Knox, and HV3. Knox and Norin both 70 to 1. That's the best number you can get. HV3 is 75 to 1 on FanDuel. You can get a little extra, you know, a little extra cheddar, a little extra moss on uh on uh HV3 there if you want. So yeah, I mean, really all three of these guys showing great form lately. HV3 is feels just more like a I don't know. It just feels like the guys like like it, it could be coming at any at any point. Like I, I know we've been betting HV3 for a long time. He's broken our hearts once or twice. He can't seem to win on the PGA Tour over here, right? Um, but it feels like it's just kind of coming. He's got these good finishes that he's popped up uh, with the T6, obviously, last week at the players. And he does mix it in there with some missed cuts, and you're like, what? what is going on? You look at how you know the fall went for him last year, 11th at the Northern Trust, 12th at BMW, 11th at Sanderson. He was kind of in the conversation. He's had all these close calls last year at the Heritage. He had a close call finish runner-up. But now he's got that baby, you know? Life is good, mama's good, baby's good. You know, like I'm, 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 I'm out here. I'm like settling into like my third or fourth year. But he's, you know, and I know producer Sam is bummed about HV3 because he had a ticket on him last week, and he he crapped the bed because he can't putt. But the the team no putt guys that that's all of a sudden when they when they get lucky that one week, mm -hmm. there it is. You know, I'm gonna talk about another guy. I don't know if it'll, yeah, I'm gonna talk about another guy in the next category that fits that mold. And I just feel like things are starting to align in the universe for HV3. So I'm gonna go ahead and start taking a piece. I haven't actually put him on the betting card in a long time. It's been a while since I've had him on the card. So this doesn't feel like a Luke List situation where I'm just auto betting him until he wins. But I'm starting to kind of get the feels, especially one week after he he really punched producer Sam in the wiener on Sunday. I think that's when we get on it. You know, we start, and then if he wins and Sam doesn't have him on the ticket, then Sam goes absolutely postal. That's what I'm here for. So, yeah, I, I kind of like that. Um, I mean, Kokrak and Lowry are, are interesting to me. I, they may end up on the betting card for me, but I, I feel like there's too much value in that 70 range. I really like. Yeah, I think um, there's a, th this is a, a, a big range for me. I, I love this range. Yeah. Um, so, but first, DB, do you know what I love? Oh, what what's that? I love very green grass. Okay, I love grass. Yeah, me too. Oh, me I love too. grass. Um, and you know what? It's hard to imagine, but spring is almost here. Uh, actually, is it here? I don't even know. Is, is it here? Has uh, it arrived? Yeah, I think it's March 21st. Isn't that the first official day of spring? Uh, I believe so. We are so close to feeling that soft grass under our feet. Mm -hmm. But first, we need to get our lawn back, DB. Okay? Mm -hmm. Thankfully, Sunday gets your lawn growing, and it helps to keep it healthy all season long okay you know you get you worry about all the chemicals you're using to keep your yard looking at its best traditional lawn care lays down 90 million pounds of pesticides each year sunday is different db okay they're on a mission to change how people care for their yards okay that's what we need to do we need to be on a mission to care for our yards in the right way sunday can help you grow a beautiful lawn without the guesswork or the nasty chemicals their custom plans include fertilizer and everything you need to easily care for your lawn and with ingredients like seaweed, iron, and molasses. You can feel good with kids and pets being around, okay? All you have to do is visit GetSunday.com, put in your address, and their lawn analysis tool does the rest. Oh, yeah. Okay? I've done this. It's fantastic. 
I mean, it even shows a picture of it's kind of it's kind of crazy. It shows a picture of your lawn and everything tells you everything you're doing wrong. Um, but then it uses soil and climate data to create a personal nutrient plan delivered to your door when you need it. OK, just attach the ready to use pouch to a garden hoe hose. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> a garden hoe. Is that like a garden gnome? You just you just take a hoe, like a, a ceramic hoe that's like looking real thotty. She got, you know, she got some fishnet stockings on, maybe some cleavage, you know, and she's you put her out in front of your yard. It's your garden hoe. Can we mark can somebody can we sell those? <laughs> Why do these things happen to me? <laughs> <laughs> she, she's not a hoe she's a sex worker i'm sorry i'm sorry oh Lord. anyway it takes less than 15 minutes my my uh, mind goes to uh one of my favorite movies pootie tang with, yeah. uh, with wanda sykes who uh who <laughs> who uh when somebody asks her pulls up and asks her how much she goes just because a lady like to stand on the street corner and dress fancy don't mean she hooking. And then she slaps him in the face. <laughs> I just picture like a Wanda Sykes, Pootie Tang, uh, garden, oh, garden yeah. boat standing out in your yard. All right, finish All right. the read. Okay, I'm, anyway. sure, I'm sure Sunday's going to love this. Sunday is offering our listeners 20% <laughs> off, okay? Full season plans start at just $129, and you can get 20% off of that at checkout when you go visit sunday.com slash junkies20, okay? That's twenty percent off your custom plan at getsunday.com slash junkies twenty. <laughs> get that get that garden stuff. <laughs> um actually before you get to your picks in this range, Pat, we do have a good question I think we should attack uh here in the in the chat. Brian Farmer, um or no, Taylor McCutcheon, our boy Taylor, says he writes article for us on tourjunkies.com. How important is course history this week? What are your thoughts? So I talked about this in the course breakdown. Um there were a number of players, Paul Casey, defending champ, Charles Schwartzel, uh, talked about it. He's won here before, too, I think. Yeah. Um, I actually talk- listened to this. This is very good information. Fantastic. Yeah. They both said that experience tends to matter here from the standpoint of wind. A lot of, a lot, both mentioned wind direction and how different wind directions can change, you know, kind of how the whole thing is played. And then it takes a couple times through it to kind of understand that. Um, now, what's interesting is, like Pat said, when you look at course history of these players, it does tend to be a little like Sawgrass, where like there aren't too many guys who just consistently knock it out of the park here. There's usually a lot of ups and downs. Um, and that and that may not necessarily mean that course history should be tossed out, but it just may mean it just may speak again to the variance of this golf course, which I think there is some. This Florida swing is just the the Florida variant swing, is what it, it really is. is. Um so I, I think you I think you weighed it, but I don't think you weighed it heavily this week. This is not a week where I'm like really going after it, um, but I but I am weighting it. I am looking at it, and, and maybe it's not even kind of like last week we talked about how it's not necessarily the how they finish each year, but it's like how many how many times have they played the golf course and like been in tournament conditions here? That, you know, do they know something? So like even if their best finish is like a 48 and they've played it three times, like that's not terrible. We're not going to toss it out. It means that they've they've gotten some laps in, but they just haven't really been able to close the door. Now, I think a secret weapon to this is our boy Caddy John Radhouse, who is uh, in the Nut Hut every week, uh, helping out, passing out a lot of good information from the caddies and from his own experience caddying on these golf courses. Caddy John d- gives us a nice write up every single week in the Nut Hut Caddy Info thread, which if you are a paying member, you can see and have access to. So all the more reason to be in the Nut Hut. Plus, a bunch of people want a bunch of money. Last week, we had a listener win a million dollars last week on uh, on DraftKings. One, the I think it was the the twenty two twenty two contest or something. Uh, anyway, that's that's my take on the history, Pat. I'll let you, you know, piggyback on that and also your picks in this range. Yeah, no, I agree. I think it's again, it's it's a little bit of history, but then also just experience. I think is the key that they that you heard from the players that you were talking about is just um, knowing the, their way around this course. Um, so. With that in mind, a few folks that I like in this range. I like Shane Lowry. I'm just going to keep going with Shane Lowry. I mean, yeah. he's been playing fantastic. He's at around 30 to 1. Um, I think that's a good number for him. Um, if you look at the stats, too, for Shane, I mean, all of it lines up for a good week. I mean, he's fourth in the field in approach. 
He's uh, fourth in ball striking, 12th in bogey avoidance, 12th in greens and regulation. Uh, the putting's always a, a little bit of an issue for him on Bermuda, but still, um, big fan of Lowry this week at 30 to 1. I like Abraham Answer at 35 to 1. I think, um, you know, he's, I'm probably, am I repeating anybody that you've already said? No. No. Why don't you like answer? I just don't. Wait a minute. Uh, no, I just don't. I, I don't. I'm not. I'm still not. I'm still I mean, not. I was. I was sold. kind of. He was popping a little bit before last week, and and I thought you know he he had he was up and down again too last week, but still t thirty three had some good rounds in there. He's got a great history here. Um, I'm just so. not sold. It's not that I don't like answer. I'm still not convinced he's a killer. He's the killer that everybody wants him to be. And I know he won, you know, he won a WGC event last year. Do you think he just likes to be up there and play in golf and yeah. He's not like trying to win or anything? I just Is that what you're saying? I just don't see it. And I don't love the tools the tools that he's working with. And I'm not you know, insanely in love with that. But he is a good player. He is a good player. Uh, he he probably can prove me wrong here, but I just don't. It's hard for me to pull the trigger on him in an outright situation. I definitely get it in DFS sometimes. I, I get it top twenty stuff, but I, I'd stop at his name weekly, and I'm like, good no, he's not gonna win. You know, okay. I don't know. All right, well, a couple more here that I like. Um, Adam Hadwin is sixty to one. Uh, he has won this golf tournament before. I thought he was uh, seventy. Is he sixty now? Um, people betting him down. Maybe he is seventy to one. Either oh, way, you could if you can get him. Oh no, 70. now he's sixty. He was seventy. He is sixty now. Yeah, I mean, I was gonna say if you can get him in sixty, but he's another guy. Um, he's won here, so has a good course history. He was top ten last week, kind of a sneaky top ten. Finished on the back nine, I believe. Um, yeah, and yeah, good Sunday just had a really good. Um, actually, it's a Monday, DB. It was a Monday. God dang it! I keep saying that. I don't. Now that but, I'm full time, TJ, I don't, I don't ever know what day it is. You know, it's kind of like when I was working from home during COVID, you would forget like what yeah. what day it is. You know? And I think too because yesterday I knew we weren't doing a podcast, and like the next day was going to be the podcast. It made it feel like a Sunday even more because that's how Sundays feel. Like oh, podcast tomorrow. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it, the whole TPC it it effed everything up. It really yeah. did. Yeah. But Hadwin though, he is checking a lot of boxes. Top ten in approach. Top 20 in ball striking. He's top 10 in bogey avoidance. You know, always putts well. He hits it very accurate off the tee. Um, and, you know, one thing I looked at, which I'm going to mention a few times in both shows tonight, is I did look at proximity stats because I think that 175 to 200 range where they, they're going to have a lot of long irons into these greens, whether it's on the par fives or in these par fours, uh, remember, you have less par fours, by the way, because there's five par threes on this golf course um, and four par fives. Um, but I still, they're going to have a lot of long irons in here. So I did throw in some proximity stats in that 175 to 200 range just to give me a good idea of some of some people that I think tend to hit the ball relatively close to the hole. Yeah, on that in that range. So, and I will I will help you here, Pat. Everybody probably thinks I'm ready to like jump on you here. Paul Casey, in that if you watch the course breakdown show, I gave a quote from Paul Casey, and he specifically said that this golf course produces a lot of mid to long iron shots. And he specifically mm -hmm. said shots between over 175 up to 225 between the par threes that are long and difficult. Uh, the part, the four par fives, as you mentioned, if you're going for them there, and and then some of these par fours. So, I I will agree with you. We want to try and find someone who historically, for the I think the long term, has been known to hit their long irons well. I, I will give you that. And I'm yes. Out. And there's there's not a whole lot of ways to find that other than looking at proximity. Proceed. Okay. The last one I'll give you is Kevin Kisner at 75 to 1. I like Kiz coming off of a good week. Although uh, there's two sides of this, actually. Kiz coming off of a good week. Yeah. Could mean he's hot and yeah. he's because he is a hot and cold player. He really is. We've known that forever about him. 
It could also mean that he just won a million dollars for finishing fourth place and doesn't give a damn. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I'm going to go with the the first part, though. I'm going to go with I think the kids can have – this is a good course for him. You know, he's a guy that hits, you know, he can pre- he pretty much hit every shot that he wants to hit. Um, hits long irons well, accurate off the tee, you know, good putter, all of those kind of things. I, I think that um, – I think kids can have a good week here on this on this course. Now he's never like been lights out on this course, but still, um, I, I like kids. It's a, I like that. I mean, seventy five to one, a it, guy coming off of that. Yeah. Oh, oh, JT John Tiller is on the back for him too on Sunday. I guess I guess Dewey, you know, Dewey was sick. Tough week. Was he, he left sick? actually in the uh, after the fifth hole of that round. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Oh, was that a separate text you had going that you didn't put me on? No, buddy? actually, it was me listening to another podcast. <laughs> he was on. It wasn't a podcast. It was on PGA XM. Oh. It was on XM Radio. He was. He did an interview today on a show on that oh. on that channel, oh. and uh, he said that um, Dewey got sick and had to basically. Gotcha. He tried to gut it out, but JT had to take over. <clears throat> okay. Um. Before we get on to the bombs, uh, the golf live the live golf event that we're having in September in Pennsylvania, guys, I'm telling you, this thing is popping off. I'm excited. Thank you to all of you who have already signed up. We've had an incredible response already. We're excited about it. But here's what I want to say. I want to give the people an update. The two-day tickets, the two-day tickets, so that's the Friday grudge match where you're choosing Team DB or Team Pat. That is the VIP party on Friday night with your teammates, myself, Pat, our teammates, whatever. And that is uh, that is also the Saturday uh, shenanigans. The two-day ticket, there are this many left. We have five left on Team Pat. Pat's All Pat's whining and pissing and moaning has finally paid oh, no. off. And now no, you've got, you now you've got more it. people. You well, I, I started it, and then you just, just kept going for weeks about it. So – Anyway, Pat only has five spots left, and when those are gone, that is it. That's that's done. We've de- we did decide no to open it up to more people, but this is it. So that will be twenty-two players on each team uh, once both teams are full, and that will be it for Friday. So there will be forty-four of you, us, the Tour Junkies family, will all be there. You guys will compete. Me and Pat will ride around as captains, scoping out our team, encouraging, making sure you're well hydrated, uh, doing all the things, and then that will culminate after your eighteen-hole matches match play there. That will culminate with a shootout between myself and Pat. You guys will all be surrounding us in golf carts, listening to music, screaming, yelling, uh, drinking, doing whatever. And and we're going to decide that the first ever winner of the Golby's Cup, just like that. And it's going to be an amazing night. And then after that, we're all going to have a great time. We're going to eat. We're going to drink. We're going to party. We're going to have a great time at, uh, at Mountain Valley in Barnesville, Pennsylvania. It's a lovely 36-hole uh, golf country club area there it's going to be beautiful they're hosting us it's beautiful absolutely beautiful and um so that is th- those tickets so pat has five people left five i have nine spots left on my team nine spots for team db five spots for pat when those are gone they're gone all right then the saturday scramble tickets there are there they're probably uh close to 100 uh, maybe a little less than 100 of those available those are just for all day Saturday. So that's a lunch. That's your round. That's uh, a dinner that night. That's beer, wine, and specialty TJ cocktails throughout the day. And all the other fun that we're going to have that evening. We're going to party Saturday night as well. It's going to be a blast. Okay? We're going to have so much fun. It's going to be the best golf tournament we've ever been to. Um, don't forget, if you want to spend the night, you can stay on the range. You can sleep on the range and camp out. Bring your own stuff. That's free. You don't have to pay anything. If you want to bring an RV or a camper, you can park in the parking lot. That's free. You don't have to pay anything. But there's also a hotel a few miles away. We have rooms blocked off. When those are gone, they're also gone. So all that information is on the event details. The link is in the podcast description and in this YouTube page. But there's a couple things that came up over the week I want to make sure people know. Yes, you can bring friends. You can bring friends. Even if they don't listen to tour junkies, you can bring them. I saw a a couple people bought a ticket for Saturday, and they bought three more for their buddies. They're they're bringing their foursome. You you can do that. And they're messaging us saying they don't listen. They don't have to be listeners. Um, what did that say? I can't read my own writing. I have a question for yes. Sam. Okay, if go ahead. If people are camping out on the on the range and stuff, can they have fires? Can we have bonfires on the range, Sam? Bonfires? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like what, what? What? What about grills? Sam says he's going to make a fire pit. Oh, okay. There you go. What about grills? 
Um, he's 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 got it. Yes to grills. Okay, yes, all right. Yes. Just just a few details that I wanted to know. You need to know that your ticket includes all your golf, your cart. It includes uh, two meals each day. So Friday you're going to get lunch and dinner. Saturday you're going to get lunch and dinner. And it includes your beer, wine, and specialty TJ cocktails. I mean, this is a really great deal. So get in it right now. And when those Friday ones are gone, it's over. And then we're going to start pushing the Saturday scramble big time. And you can also come as a spectator. We've had a couple yeah. people buy spectator tickets. You can do both days. You can do just Saturday. If you don't play golf, you're just a TJ fan. You want to come hang out, party, meet people, come on. You know, the, the spectator tickets are, are also easy, and those include your food and beverage. They just – not everything but golf. So knock yourself out. The, hey, uh, go ahead and get the – I mean, only five left for, for Team Pat. I mean, let's go ahead and fill up Team Pat and make DB beg to get the rest of his. I mean, look, only five. Yeah, yeah, only five. <laughs> only five. Nine for me high for pat so let's go all right uh let's keep it moving pat let's get to the long range up to 130 to one i only have a few names here and i don't really feel great about well i tell you the one so i want to bring this guy up because i've mentioned you know hv3 kind of team no putt whatever right um another team no putt guy and a guy that i had in dfs and he was looking good and kind of fizzled he made the cut and then he fizzled over the weekend um but I, I'm a sucker for Aaron Wise. Aaron Wise mm. only won one time on the PJ Tour. Yet he sent, he tends to be a darling for a lot of people in the community. But uh, he's 100 to 1 on DraftKings. Checks the box on approach. Bogey avoidance he's actually shockingly good at for a guy like him that's kind of uh, you know erratic at times, but uh, hits it a long way off the tee. He's, he avoids bogeys. He plays well on tough tracks. And long term he hasn't been doing it great lately but long term and throughout his pj tour career he's been one of the best scramblers on tour like really good but he cannot putt he is a hundred percent team no putt now he was on a decent little run late last year early this year where he was like at least positive in stroke team putting and the last two events the arnold palmer and the players he lost four and a half strokes putting at the api and five putting at the players Finished 17th at API, 50th at the players, thanks to, like I said, a rough weekend. But the ball striking has been tremendous the last couple of events. Uh, just strokes game ball striking, over seven shots at the players and over eight shots at the API. So, I mean, it's just one of those guys like a Luke List that all he needs is one week where the putter is average or slightly better than field average, and and he's there. Um, so I think I think I'll have a little... I think I'll have a little Aaron Wise. And actually, last time he played this event was 2018, and he actually gained three strokes putting and lost five and a half tee to green, which is not his MO. So I think I'm going to buy a little Aaron Wise at 101. It's a, it's a tempting little piece there. And then, uh, you know, maybe, I don't know, Pat, take me to Denny's. What if I told you I wanted to go yes, to Denny's? Yes, go to Denny's. I think I do. Get you some shrimp. Despite his despite his terrible iron play and and, you know, historically not being a great long iron player the putting the around the green play does avoid the bogeys um i mean he's he's, he's interesting he's had a couple close calls he was in, he was in the mix at the amex uh he was in the mix at the honda last year bermuda a couple times i think um so i don't know mccarthy at 90 to 1 just seems like something i'd you know whatever he finished ninth here his first time out in 2019 finished 39th last year um, crushes it on the greens here like he always does. I don't know. Denny feels interesting to me. Um, it's just a name that popped in this range. It, you know, felt like I might put a little sprinkle on it. That's probably it for me, though. Okay. Um, that's actually what I, I feel like he's one of the first people we've agreed on. No. Oh. Out, outside of Usi. Because I like Denny. Another guy I like, you did not like last week, by the way. You actually walked with his group. Huh. And, and the practice. Desire. Rounds. Patton Kazai. Did you see what he did off the tee? Was it not what I said he was doing off no, the tee? No, you are correct, but he still managed to like Cam Smith. <laughs> also, also, so I told you, because and I think I put this in the nut hut, he was spraying the ball everywhere off the tee, and then I put this in the nut hut, and I know, or maybe I did, I know I told you, on 16, he shanked the ball and almost hit Aaron Fleener in the back of the head and definitely ended his week and possibly his life. I mean, this yeah. ball was screaming off the hosel. <laughs> He that, also shanked I, one on 17. And then the I was going to say, and then he shanked one on 17. I mean, what I saw was real. I, he just lucky he rabbit. Filled, he still finished T22. I know. <laughs> like he, 
Like, can you imagine? He had 10 birdies on Sunday. I mean, this guy is – he is playing really Did well. Stash? Did you see the stash? No, I didn't see it. The mustache guy. is fire. I mean, I got to say, I don't love the mustache on a lot of people, but it looks good on him. He looks like a, a longer Doc Redmond, like a long Doc. Yeah. You know? Real long. Um, yeah, he might, like, is, is he like a is he like a, a Western character? Like from uh, – no, not like, like like EVR. It's not like a Doc it. Holiday or anything. No, like it's just I don't know something about it. It's just like really clean. It kind of fits him, you know. It's not it's like super scraggly. It's not over the top, but it's not like so small, you know. I don't know. It it, it looks it looks good. I like it. I like it on Patton. It, it looks it looks nice. He's a great well, guy too, man. Patton. I mean, Kazire, he's been fun. playing really well. I mean, he has his, been. You know, you, you take in the top twenty five last week, then the T thirty two at the on Palmer, T sixty one at Genesis top 10 at, at, in Phoenix. He's really been playing well pretty much all year. So at 130 to one, a guy that's in, in good form, um, who does have ex experience on this golf course, um, multiple PJ tour winner, right? Is he won twice? Yeah, Three. he's won twice. He had like two and one, two, like really close together. Didn't he? Um, I could be wrong there, but wait, I mean, I just can't tell you how bad he was spraying it that day. God, dog. Well, he was everywhere. Um, anyway, still I like him this week. That's really all I got in this. I mean, I had yeah, it's I had not my favorite. Thing. This is not a like a, a huge range that I love. So. I don't love the next range. I mean, if you look at it over the last few years, Sam Burns won last year at seventy to one, and Adam Hadwin won at one twenty five to one. But other than that, it's been a lot of shorter numbers. Your Paul Casey's um, at twenty five or something to one. Charles Schwartzel was 33 to 1 when he won. Jordan Speed at 16 to 1 when he won. So I mean it, it hasn't been we haven't seen a ton of bombs of late. Uh I mean Burns is 70 to 1 whatever, but we all knew he he was he was world class coming. He was a winner at every level. So it does feel like the winner is going to come from that 70 to 70 and shorter range this week. Um Yeah, I don't have a ton. I do have I do have some hello fresh in the fridge though. I'll tell you that Pat. And I Whenever I got HelloFresh in the fridge, I usually get happy. Like this week, I had those uh, Korean those Korean meatballs with the rice and the uh, green beans with the um, yeah, it's good what's stuff. the barbecue sauce they call it? Um, bulgogi, bulgogi sauce, delicious mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, HelloFresh delivers pre-portioned ingredients to your door, including farm fresh produce that arrives within a week, so you get the convenience of skip. You don't, <laughs> so you get convenience without skipping on quality. Skimping is that? Hey, it's not as it's okay. not as easy as people think to read these. Things. Skip the trip to the grocery store, saving you the wait in long lines and ensuring you don't waste money on excess food. What I like is you can go in there and you can order, you can pick out your meals ahead of time. You can say, "Nope, don't want that. I want this. I want that. I want this. I want that." It's easy, and they're seventy two percent cheaper than rest than a restaurant meal of the same quality. And you can save on average over sixty five dollars a month when you order HelloFresh instead of grocery shopping. That's money back in your pocket, which you need right now with all this inflation and stuff costs and stuff. You know, um, it's great stuff. It really is. I've been using HelloFresh for over a year now. Enjoy cooking it. Me and the wife, you know, we do it. We turn on some music or something. We have a great time in the kitchen. It gets maybe gets romantic. Maybe it's a little, you know, a little head start to what you got trying to lock up later. You know, if you're trying to lock that up, be a man in the kitchen. You know what I mean? That you know handles your your business. In the Sexy kitchen, time, I like to call it. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, so go to HelloFresh.com/slash/tourjunkie16 and use code tourjunkie16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. That means you get to gift a meal to somebody else, which is pretty cool. I've done that. Um, so go to HelloFresh.com/slash/tourjunkie16 and use code tourjunkie16. For up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Hello Fresh, America's number one meal kit. And we know it, and they know it, and you know it, and your mama knows it. And if she doesn't know it, she should know it. All right, Pat, let's get to it. Any bombs over 160 to one? I don't, I don't have I don't have many. I mean, the the there's so so many is so small I can't barely read it. Um definitely would prefer some of these guys at at top 20 numbers. I do want to ask you this though. I just mentioned Doc Redman. Is Doc Redman back? Is he back? I, Can we say he's back? I mean, I guess you. Could. I love Doc Redman. Like I'm a big. I, I like Doc. I like Doc. The, the the guy. I, I wouldn't. I don't think you bet him to win, but yeah, maybe a top twenty or something like that. So, but but Doc in his PJ Tour career, and it's been ups and it's had its ups and downs. 
he's he's been in the mix. Like Doc is not one that when he gets, you know, I talked about this with Seabass a couple weeks ago. Seabass hadn't been in the mix yet late on a Sunday on the PJ Tour. Doc has been through the fire. I mean, one of his first events out in 2019, he was in the fire at the Rocket Mortgage, finished runner-up, couldn't get it done. 2020, August, the Wyndham, finished third. I remember that one. I remember that one. I had him bet. I, I bet him out right that week. Two weeks later, finished third at the Fortinet. Three weeks after that, finished fourth at the Bermuda. Um, finished runner-up at the Palmetto last year, the tournament that we won't talk anymore about. Like, Doc has been in the flames a little bit late on a Sunday. But what I'm seeing here lately because Doc's iron play was was always super solid. Like, off the tee and iron play was always super solid, and he lost it for a little bit. But what I'm seeing here lately is, like, you know, four out of his last five events gaining strokes on approach, starting to do some things with the putter. 26th at the players. That's a, that's a big deal. 33rd at Pebble Beach. 25th at the Farmers. I don't know. I just feel like he's, he's 190 to 1 on FanDuel, and Redmond just feels like one of those bombs that, you know, I, I don't know. It could be interesting. I feel like if he got in the mix and he had his best stuff, I think he could actually close the door. I don't think it would be too big for him. I don't think he'd freak out. I think he'd get it done. Um, another guy kind of like this is a bomb. Just a couple here in the plus two hundred number. Danny Lee at two fifty to one. <laughs> he kind of he kind of showed up for me. Did he? Bit. Yeah, he sh- he shows up a little bit. Um, he's two fifty to one on Bet MGM. Uh, Danny Lee. What can we say about Danny Lee? I mean, he's He's Danny Lee. He's as volatile as volatile as they come, but he's he's popped he's popped some form a little bit, and he's played the Valspar decent. He's got a 21st here last year, finished seventh in 2015 here. This place tends to uh, to serve you know suit his eye, I guess. 21st at the Genesis earlier. I don't know. Danny Lee at 250. Uh, Matt Naismith at 250. I like ball striker. You just you know like Aaron Wise. You're waiting on the putter. Now he hadn't really been in it late, so I don't know if that's really going to happen, but it's a number. Hank Lebiota at 280 to 1. I have on authority that Hank definitely uh he finished 63rd at the Genesis, but he hit it better than it may have appeared. I think he caught a couple bad breaks off the tee, leading him to lose four shots off the tee while gaining five on approach, which is very good. So, and Hank can kind of he tends to run like real hot and cold. So if the irons are turning up, you know, he had that little run in the summer last year, fifth at the Travelers, fourth at the Rocket Mortgage, eighth at the John Deere, where everybody's like, oh, my God, Hank, Hank, here comes Hank Leviota, and then he fizzled out. He's at 280 to 1. I don't know. He's He's been tested by the fire a little bit. Not a lot, but just a little bit. So I could, I don't know. I don't know if I'll bet any of those, but those are some long shots if, you, if you're interested that caught my eye. Well, I'll give you a couple here that I like. Um I think in the right at 190 to 1, 200 to 1 range. I think Nick Taylor is a decent play here. Um yep, he you know, this me. just this just feels like a good a good course fit for him. Um you know, right around with the other the other Taylor, Vaughn Taylor, another one. They, these are two guys that Boy, know, Vaughn they, Taylor just just kills the models this week. Yeah, like, and they they both won on the same course, Pebble Beach. Um but I, I think if you look at their games, they're just, you know, really good off the tee, you know, good ball don't striking. Make big numbers. Yeah, they don't make – you know, it's just – it's there's not a whole lot of excitement to this their games, but that's that's what you get this week um, on this course. Um, another one I'm kind of surprised you didn't mention, and, and this is um, – you know, who knows? Maybe he gets his first ever win here, and – he doesn't have any experience here at all, but he's a guy that we've been talking about pretty much all year um, at at most events, and that's Grayson Sig at two hundred to one. Uh, you know, I, he's another one that I think can I'm burning you know, me, man. I'm I'm a little burned by him. You burned out by some Sig. Yeah, he's 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 hurt me. The weeks I've been on him, yeah. he's like a, he's like a young Gary Woodland to me right now. Like when I'm on him, he sucks. When I'm off him, he, when I'm off him, he's top twenty five. I mean, we're gonna have him on the show. We've been talking to him, so I'm gonna ask him about it. But I just can't. I think I like him better as a top twenty. But you know, if, if we're given an outright and and two hundred to one, it's, it's not terrible. All right, there you go. There's the bombs. Let's talk. Uh, let's talk a little prize picks before we dish out our favorite outright bets. Prize picks. Last week was probably our worst week. We've been we've been pretty hot. The FGS has definitely been hot. The FGS has you know got a great winning percentage going right now. The show last week we went one and two. FGS went three and two. 
So not super good, but you know, we're getting there. You know, last yeah. week we got caught. I got caught a little bit, not necessarily on the fantasy gospel, but I did on my own personal plays with some of the wave stuff. Cause I put in plays Wednesday night that had some afternoon guys and then it just got totally screwed. So yeah, I did good, um, good on prize picks for that. <laughs> yeah, late so. on late on Monday, God dang it, late on Monday, I did bring it to the attention of some nut hutters that they threw up. They just like randomly threw up some uh, whole sixteen props and uh, like bir like birdie or you know total score numbers on that, and I feasted on that because it was all at four and a half. And I was picking the over and unders or whatever. I would, I would pick two guys and I'd do the flex play where you only have to get one right. And I was ma I made money on every single group. So if, as long as I was like, all right, I'm, I'm gonna do it on the first group. If I hit, I'm gonna keep going. And I just kept going until they didn't offer them anymore. And I made like 150 bucks. It was easy. So Prize Picks is killing it. It's uh, it's great stuff, man. We really appreciate Prize Picks. And listen, um, we need to make an announcement here too, Pat. Oh, Big is it announcement time? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. The road to Augusta. Presented by Prize Picks, we are so thrilled that Prize Picks chose to partner with us and do this. We wanted to do this contest so bad. We did it years ago, like 2016, 2017. We did it with another company that's no longer existent in existence anymore. But it was just such a great time to host a listener to Augusta and get to show them the ropes. And you guys responded. We 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 did this. You know, we did the contest over the last six weeks or so. Prize Picks generously has volunteered to fly out, not just a listener, but also a guest, put them up in a hotel for three nights, treat them to a round of golf with me and Pat on Monday at Champions Retreat, dinner Monday night, party Monday night at Champions, Tuesday, spend all day out at Augusta and having a great time. It's just going to be an awesome time. And uh, Prize Picks notified us of the winner that was randomly selected uh, over at Prize Picks. We couldn't find a way to make it happen live here, but a winner has been selected. And I do have to say, for those of you that are not the winner, the winner has accepted the offer and has cleared their schedule, and it is done. It is locked up. Airline tickets are bought. It's over. Because I know one year we did this. Boom. One year we did this, Pat. Remember, like the guy it didn't respond for 24 yeah. hours, and people were like, all right, if he doesn't respond, we draw again. And so we drew again, and then the one guy who couldn't get off of work, like literally his boss wouldn't let him off of work to go to Augusta. So this one's done. Um, the winner. Of the 2022 prize picks road to Augusta, coming to Augusta, Georgia, is Mr. Steve Smetana. Steve! I think that's, how do you say his name, Pat? Oh, nice. Steve. Steve Smetana. 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 Steve is a Nut Hut member, which I'm pumped about. Which that's amazing. Schmitty, he goes by in the Nut Hut. Schmitty88, I think. Nut Hut member. And I'm also really excited about this. Me and Pat love treating people who have never been to the Masters. Yes. Love treating them. Steve has never been, and he's bringing his son who's never been. So that's awesome. Super pumped about that. Um, we just can't wait. It's going to be a great time. Thank you to everybody who played. Thank you to Prize Picks. Steve is in. It's going to be a great contest. And for everyone else, I'm sorry you're not Steve. But he seems like a great guy, very deserving. Yeah. Okay, that's that. Let's get to the picks, Pat. Now, we're going to do a couple extra picks because you're not going to be doing Fantasy Golf Sommelier this week because of the weird schedule, right? Yep, not going to be able to do it this week because usually I record tonight. And since we're doing the show tonight, I'm not going to be able to do it. So we're going to, we'll, we'll be back on that next week okay. going strong leading up to the Masters. So I'm going to give you two picks, okay? Great. I love this. Usually I do one. Um, and I'm going to start with this. Um, I'm going to the whole place. So on number 11, which is a par five, it is the second easiest hole on the course. Um, pretty fairly, you know, it's a straightforward par five. It, it does get a little tight kind of in the landing areas. Um, you know, but you, it's, there's a little narrow window that you can hit it into. But if you get it in there, um, it's it's only 575 yards. These guys can score on this court on this hole. I like Victor Hovland the under on this hole. Okay, he is the number one player in this field in par five scoring. I liked what I saw from Victor last week. Um, he was so up and down, but the kid fought. Man, I love Victor. I'm, yeah. I'm such a big Hovland Same. fan. Um, but I like him for 
round number one. Who's I not? think Daniel Berger. <laughs> I know Berger's not. Berger's not. Um, or maybe so. I don't know. They get in these things like on the course, and then maybe afterwards they all like have a good laugh, and they're like, "Yeah, I was maybe I was overreacting a little bit or something." Kind of like me it happens to me uh, on the yeah. course all the time. Yeah. Um. So number eleven, par five under four and a half. I like Victor Hovland there. And these guys, I think, are going to score on day one. And that's where I think we got a little bit of an edge, okay? And so I'm going to give you one, and then I'm going to let DB give you a few others. I, I think too. I think they're going to make some birdies out here. And so I'm going to hammer the over on total birdies. And I like Dustin Johnson over three and a half birdies on Thursday, okay? So just he's just got to get four birdies. They've got four par fives. Just give me – I mean, I, I don't care. He, he He's going to have birdies out here. I, I think he can at least have five. But it doesn't matter. All he's got to do is get four. So, DJ over three and a half on total birdies. Yeah, I think right now – I mean, you, you guys need to do this because I think Price Picks is going to change some of this. The weather looks perfect for Thursday as of now, as of Tuesday. It looks warm enough, The no wind. I mean, last year there were 41 guys that shot two under or better on this golf course on day one. Keegan Bradley was your first-round leader at seven under. And most of the birdie or better props are currently set at three and a half. I mean, that's to get four birdies on a course with four par fives where 41 people shot two under or better last year and the first-round leader was seven under is not that hard to do. So I think you pound the overs on some of these birdie or better numbers, as long as it stays at three and a half, especially Pat mentioned DJ. Um, Russell Knox is one I like the most. His number is at three and Russell Knox has done very well at this golf course comes in in fantastic form. I think that one is as big a lock as there's ever been. Yeah. So at three or three and a half, I would play that one with Russell Knox uh, and Shane Lowry's at three and a half. Who's playing hot right now. So, I mean, I, I think you pound the over on birdie or better. If I was going to take an under uh, somewhere, just for kicks and giggles, actually, let me make sure that the under is still where it's at. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, it is. Yes, for both. I'm going to give you. An, I'm going to give you some bonus plays tonight because I, I like these numbers a lot. I'm taking the under on total strokes round one for Harold Varner at 72. So that just means all he has to shoot is even par. It's a par 71. Harold Varner shoot even par. Coming off a great week at the place. Yeah, that's a good. I didn't even see that one. That's a good number. And Keegan's at 71. So he all he has to do to hit the under is shoot one under. This guy led, he was shot seven under in round one last year. And we know how how hot he can be. And he's hot right now. So, I mean, unless he's just completely emotionally spent after the week that he had and the wacky turn of events on Sunday, I don't know. I still see Keegan coming out here and shooting at least one under or better. So there we go. Prize picks plays. Shout out to Prize Picks. You can still sign up for Prize Picks and use promo code TJ. You get a hundred percent deposit bonus up to a hundred dollars. It's legal in like twenty six states. It's just the best. It's the most fun. I, I'm winning more money on Prize Picks right now than I am DFS. Yeah, I it's, even in DFS last week, I won money on Prize Picks. It really is a lot of fun too, and especially since you can kind of live live play yeah. it like you do like you did last week for the uh on hole number 16 on on yeah. monday i mean that's, i do way better doing this live than i do showdowns yeah and they're adapting to things as they're happening in the turn i mean like yeah. no like you wouldn't see this on a dfs site you know where they uh, you know put up something and said all right we're gonna play hole number 16 on a monday when they've had delays all week i mean it really is it's it's a it's a fun way to really play you know, more games throughout the tournament. Yep. Love it. All right, sign up. All right, let's get to the final segment for tonight's show. We're going to recap some stuff, Pat. We've got, uh, you know, we've gone through a lot of names here, gone through a lot mm -hmm. of names, and we need to go over the ones we like the most, the ones we think you need to jump on right now, and some top 20s as well. And I have a couple props I'm going to throw out, or one prop I'm going to throw out. Presented to you by Covers.com, winning starts at Covers. Go there, check out our article. I got three head-to-head -head matchups, two nationality props, and a top 40 that I'm about to give you right now. I'm gonna give you go ahead and give you a sneak preview of that one. Pat, my top 40, I'm gonna make I'm gonna hit you with this right off the bat. I have a top 40 bet, Pat, that I love. Wow. And okay. I don't bet top 40 bets. Wesley Bryan, and aka Wedgley Bryan. Oh man. Wedgley right. 
Brian. Here we go again. Wesley Bryant. Is, at, is it five to one? Five to one to top 40. Basically, just to make the cut and do a little bit better. Like, make the cut, do a little bit better. Five to one. He is on the final start of his medical, uh, major medical exemption. This is the spot he chose. He can he can choose. He chose he chose Copperhead. He chose Ennis Brook. Rightfully so. He finished 48th here last year, which isn't great, but he did finish seventh here his first time out in 2017. Wesley Bryan um, fits the mold here. He hits a lot of fairways. He's a decent iron player. Historically, a really good wedge player and putter, although he hasn't shown a lot of form of late. But we just saw a guy named Ryan Brim, who in the last start of his major medical had to finish second or win to retain full status on the PJ Tour at the Puerto Rico. And what did he do? He won at the Puerto Rico. Like these guys get a little extra juice in their loins. He didn't just win. He won like by five. He won hundreds. <laughs> these yeah. guys get a little extra juiced up when it comes to that. Now, now Wesley is a former winner. So he's going to have, he's going to have lifetime status to some extent as a past champion. He's got some conditional status. He's not going to fully go away if he doesn't, if he doesn't do this, but I think he, ha he has to finish like a solo sixth or better to get full status. And I think he has to finish like 50th or something or better to get conditional. So he's going to be gunning. I mean, like he's coming into this ready to go. He's not wasting the start if he's not. So there we go. Um, I'm going Wesley Bryan. You mentioned Von Taylor. Von Taylor's nine to one to top 20. I mean, he checks all the boxes, whatever. Von Taylor top 20. I'll go with that. Uh, Russell Knox, who I've gone on and on about tonight, love him, plus 275 top 20, and Alex Noren plus 280 top 20. Love those top 20 numbers. And then my favorite outrights that I think you need to jump on now would be Aaron Wise, who I mentioned at 100 to 1. I think that number gets shorter, and all we need is just a, just average putting week from Aaron Wise, and we're, we're in contention. And then Russell Knox and Alex Noren at 70 to 1. I think you jump on those. Okay. Well, a few more. Well, these are your favorites that you just gave, but you just switched totally yes. from – okay. Um, so I like Usi at 24 to one, big fan of his, and I'm a huge fan of Abraham answer at 35 to one. Those are my two favorites there in that kind of shorter range mid range. I love Adam Hadwin at 60 to one. If we're looking at some top 20 plays, there's a few here that I really like. Um, one, here's a, here's a name for you. Graham McDowell. No, plus yeah. 750. I think Graham McDowell could have a good week. This is like he's another guy that kind of picks his spots. This is a good course fit for him. He's not very long or anything, but he's he's straight. You know, good ball striker. I like Graham McDowell there at plus plus seven fifty. A couple others that I like here. If you're if you're looking at um, just top twenties that are my favorite this week. Uh, I like Patton Kazire at plus 450. I mentioned him as an outright. And then this is kind of like a fear of missing out. So I don't want to, like, this is a FOMO play. I don't want to, I'm not going to bet him outright because I don't think he can win. But Troy Merritt, he's going to, Troy Merritt's going to end up on the leaderboard somewhere. He's at okay. plus 410. I like him also as a top 20 bet. And then the last one that I will give you here in this top 20 range um, is Kiss. Three to it plus three hundred top twenty. I love that one. That's my that's my favorite top twenty right there. Okay, believing in the Kisner. 